When it comes to life on Earth and human history, scientists and historians have some of the answers, but not all of them. They're great at their job, and they can reach grand conclusions based on tiny clues and pieces of evidence, but sometimes they encounter something that leaves them totally stumped. That's what today's video is all about. These are the strange and wonderful places all over the world that are amazing to see, but impossible to understand even for scientists. Why have one tree when you can have two? That seems to be the theory in Casorzo, Italy, where there's a remarkable sight to behold in a field. It's two trees in one, and they're completely different species of tree. The bottom one is a mulberry tree, but it has a cherry tree growing on top of it. It's a sort of hybrid duplex of the kind that very rarely occurs in nature. While smaller trees do occasionally grow on top of larger ones, it's very unusual to see two fully grown trees cohabiting and thriving like this. Usually, one of the tree's good health will come at the expense of the other, and it's usually the tree on top that suffers, as the beautiful white flowers on the cherry tree demonstrate that isn't the case here. Unsurprisingly, the strange tree has become a tourist attraction for the area, although it's had to be fenced off for its own protection so that people don't get too close. Climbing it is illegal. Mystery surrounds the origins of the Hidenter in Austria. It's believed to have been built during the reign of the Roman Emperor Constantius II, who ruled between the years of 351 and 361, but that's little more than a best guess. The ancient Romans sometimes built structures like this to mark the site of significant military victories. That would make a degree of sense, because the ancient city of Carnentum once existed in this spot and played host to around 50,000 people surrounded by a walled fortress. The settlement is long gone, but the one remaining arch of this building remains. For several centuries, it was misunderstood as the gateway to the old city. As so little of its true history is known, Plenty of myths and legends have grown up around the Hydenter. It's become a popular gathering spot for pagans who refer to it as Heaven's Gate for reasons unknown. If it really was a Roman tetrapylon, it would probably have a statue of either an emperor or a god in the middle of it. But there's no sign of it today. There's a clue in the name of Envaintinit Island in Kenya that tells you a lot about how the Kenyans feel about it. The name of the strange-looking island, which is on Lake Turkana, translates as No Return. That ties in with the myths and legends that surround the place, which suggest that nobody who enters it will ever return. In 1935, English explorer Vivian Fush decided to test that theory by visiting it with colleagues Bill Dason and Martin Shelfels on a research mission. But when they failed to return, it only served to reinforce the legends. While some conspiracy theorists claim that the island contains an alien base full of extraterrestrial beings who will abduct anybody who gets too close, the Kenyan belief is that those who descend into the enormous crater at the island's center will be struck by lightning and obliterated. Photographs taken by planes that have flown over the crater show what appear to be the remains of ancient huts at its center, but nobody's been brave enough to go and inspect it with their own eyes for a very long time. Perhaps that's for the best. There are many ancient and wonderful temples in Syria, most of which have their own fascinating story to tell, but the fascination with the Temple of Ain Dara is especially strong. That's mostly because of the huge human foot imprints that appear at the entrance to the temple. They've been there for at least as long as the temple has, which is at least 3,300 years and there's disagreement about how they got there. Scientists and archaeologists say that they were carved by the same people who built the temple and are intended to represent the procession of the gods into the temple's inner chambers. But many local legends say that the temple itself was visited by a great god with clawed feet who left the imprints himself. Yet another school of thought says that the people who built the temple were giants and they left the footprints behind. There are many tales of giant humans living in this part of the world during ancient times, and the footprints are the first thing that the people who believe these stories point to as evidence. 
Sadly, the temple was badly damaged after being hit by a Turkish air raid in 2018, but the footprints survived. Most people who visit Egypt also visit the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is a spectacular sight to see. But if a few more of them could be persuaded to drive a further 20 minutes to Abu Ghraib, it wouldn't be such a little-known secret. The old city contains a structure that is, or at least was, a sun temple and was dedicated to the great god Ra. It was built somewhere around 2400 years ago and used to have a stepped pyramid of its own. From ancient Egyptian historical records, we know that there were once six sun temples at Abu Ghraib, but only two remain today. They're ruins today, as the colossal stone obelisk that once marked the westernmost point of Abu Ghraib, the massive red granite blocks that are scattered across the area are a puzzle for archaeologists. They appear to have been precision engineered with polished surfaces and holes so smooth that they must surely have been made using advanced drilling technology. As if that weren't mysterious enough, there are also several square alabaster dishes that contain markings akin to the gears of an engine. Did the people who lived here have access to advanced technology? If so, what happened to it? And to them. Once upon a time, Barsak Elmas was an island in the Aral Sea. These days, the water level is a little lower than it was in ancient times, and it's now a plateau in Kislorda, Kazakhstan. Much like Avaitinet Island in Kenya, this is said to be a place that people visit and never return from. Even the name, which translated from its original Turkic language means whoever comes here shall not return. In 1939, it was declared a national reserve and was closed off to visitors for the remainder of the 20th century. Nobody knows what the Soviets did there during those years, but there are plenty of rumors that it was used for top-secret research. Even today, electronic devices fail as you get close, and navigational equipment stops working. There have been documented cases of people's skin turning blue after spending too long at or close to the plateau, and a commonly told legend about a group of nomads who stayed here for what they believed to be a year, only to return to civilization to find that three decades had passed? It's a mysterious and seemingly supernatural place. Amid the ruins of Amman in Jordan, where you'll find the crumbling shells of temples and palaces, you'll also find the shattered remnants of a giant human hand made from stone. This is the Hand of Hercules, and even in its broken, three-fingered state, it's still a strangely intimidating thing to look at. The hand is part of the Temple of Hercules, which was built during the second century during the Roman occupation of Amman Citadel. For reasons that have been lost to history, it appears that the temple was never finished. The presence of an elbow made from marble implies that there was once a plan to build a colossal statue of Hercules here which, had it been completed, would likely have been the largest statue in the world at that time. The region is known for earthquakes, so it's possible that the Romans gave up on the idea of building anything here after enduring one earthquake too many for their liking. As tour guides like to point out to the curious visitors, the nails and cuticles on the hand look like they're well-trimmed and conditioned, leading to jokes about Hercules enjoying regular manicures. While we at least know that the Romans were responsible for building the abandoned Temple of Hercules, we have no idea whatsoever who built the Pyramid of Ciusioco in Mexico City, Mexico. There's some evidence that an enormous volcanic eruption destroyed the civilization that once existed here, but aside from that, they left very little behind for us to remember them by, other than their pyramid. By examining the land around the pyramid, archaeologists have been able to conclude that it was farmed for a period that started around 3,200 years ago and ended during the first century when the Sitle volcano erupted. That was a tragic twist of irony for the Mesoamerican population who were thought to have worshipped a god of fire. While some historians believe that the entire population perished in that disaster, there are some who believe that the survivors fled to other parts of Mexico and took elements of their culture with them, eventually playing a role in the rise of Teotihuacan. While there are no humans living here anymore, there's a thriving population of rattlesnakes and tarantulas 
making it a somewhat hazardous place to visit. The mystery of the lost city of the Kalahari is an existential one, by which we mean that there's controversy about the question of whether it really exists at all. The story begins in 1885, when the Canadian magician and explorer William Leonard Hunt, also known as the Great Farini, claimed to have found an empty city of ancient ruins while crossing the Kalahari Desert on foot. In his report to the Royal Geographic Society, he spoke of seeing half-buried ruins, shattered temples, burial grounds, and semi-collapsed walls. That prompted no less than 25 expeditions in the decades that followed, none of which found anything like what the great Farini described. By 1964, a new idea had arisen. A.J. Clement theorized that the magician had been mistaken about the route he took through the desert and devised an alternative route that Hunt may have taken by accident. By following it, he found a series of colossal stone monoliths made of dolerite, a material that, as it erodes, can begin to resemble straight, square blocks that resemble walls. Clement concluded that what Hunt actually saw was nothing more than a natural rock formation dating back 180 million years. But his explanation didn't satisfy everybody. There are still people searching for the lost city of the Kalahari to this day. The Nazis built a lot of strange structures all over Europe over the course of the Second World War, and not all of them are understood. In the absence of solid information, many wild and wondrous theories have sprung up, such as those that surround the concrete rings they built on the coast of the Barents Sea. The fact that the Soviet military took ownership of them after the war and refused to let anyone else get close for several decades did little to dispel the most extreme of those theories. To some, the Soviet interest in the site confirmed that these were places that the Germans conducted tests on anti-gravity devices and weapons of mass destruction. There's been some speculation that this is the place that the Nazis worked on a top-secret project known as Die Glocke, or the Bell. Other than knowing its shape, nobody truly knows what Die Glocke was supposed to do, aside from the fact that it was a fearsomely powerful weapon. It's perhaps more likely that these were concrete bases upon which rotating artillery pieces were mounted. But that's far less fun to believe. There are people who live in the town of Swinton in North Yorkshire, England, who believe that there's an ancient temple in their neighborhood. Looking at Swinton Druid's temple, it's not hard to understand why. It certainly has the appearance of something ancient, and the words Druid Temple ought to give a clue to its function. In reality, however, it was built a mere two centuries ago by an extremely eccentric landowner, William Danby, who lived in Swinton during the 1820s, was a wealthy and generous man who was concerned about rising unemployment in his hometown. To help solve the problem, he paid dozens of locals to build the temple for him as an effigy to Stonehenge. Once that was done, he offered a huge financial reward to anyone capable of living as a hermit in the middle of it for seven years. Someone managed to stay for four and a half years, but nobody managed all seven, and William's reward was never claimed. Even though it's not really an ancient temple, it's still visited by New Age pagans and druids every summer solstice. Gunji Womp in Groton, Connecticut, USA is the type of place that gives archaeologists and historians a headache. The settlement has been used and reused by a variety of settlers for at least 1,400 years, all of whom left their own mark on the landscape. There are stone chambers, stone rings, etching on the walls that don't correspond to any known language, and Native American artifacts. There are so many traces of human occupation in Gunji Womp it's impossible to say where one era of its use ended and the other began, or even who was the first there. One popular theory is that it was built in the 6th century by Celtic Christian monks who'd run away from Ireland to escape Viking raids, but that would rewrite the accepted history of pre-Columbian America and also disregards several pieces of evidence that suggest the site is far older. Occasional spikes in electromagnetic activity have been detected at Gungiwamp, which scientists put down to the composition of magnetite, granite, and quartz rocks. 
But conspiracy theorists buy into the idea that it's either an alien base or an energy vortex. One lithic stone tool found buried here is at least 3,500 years old, which blows a hole in the Celtic monk theory. We don't know whether it was built in stages or all at once. And frustratingly, we probably never will. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.